absolutely too much information to talk about today. We're going to come out with another highly on video. I know the frequency is increased, but I know there's a lot of people out there that need to hear this information. I'm one of them. It just so happens that I'm uh, actually producing the content myself. So this is partially self-fulfilling to me because I want to make sure that I continually scour the landscape and make sure that I'm sharing that information out there for the very people that I'm advocating for. For those of you who uh, are wondering who that is, I am advertising for the retail investor, 100%. My job on the independent investor channel, and I don't do this for a living, I do it because I want to. Very simple. You can subscribe to the channel or not subscribe. Hell, you can unsubscribe for all I give a shit. I don't care. Okay, I do this because I want to. It keeps me busy on my downtime. Uh, it keeps me busy when I'm not researching stock and looking at the stock market. Uh, I am an avid investor, but um, I do share this with those retail out investors out there that have got 100 shares in the company, maybe a couple hundred shares, maybe even upwards of, of uh, thousands of shares in the company had a few people uh, approach me and they're like, you know, Ryan, I'm, I'm down big. I'm, I'm down, you know, some savings that I had put away in your, in, in my life. Those are the, also the people that I'm advocating for. Um, I don't care. Uh, I'm not here to scrutinize or, or judge uh, your uh, lack of uh, potential uh, tolerance to the, to the market. In other words, maybe highly on shouldn't have been your first place to look uh, if you were looking to build a comprehensive portfolio for yourself, okay? Um, I look at a, a holding like this as needing or requiring some level of eligibility to enter, okay? But in the first couple minutes, I want to give a shout out to Paul Cardo. He runs the Rat Pack Stock channel. I've been following him for a long, long time. Anybody who views this video, I need you to click over there and I need you to subscribe to the channel. It's a personal favor of mine. He doesn't know me. We've never talked. I leave comments on his channel. It's the first time that I've watched a video from Paul where I, I think he runs the channel the same way with 5,000 or 6,000 subscribers as he would with 100,000. And he made a comment that really stuck with me. And that's why I, I need you to, like if you're shell-shocked a little bit, to go the hell over there and subscribe to his channel. Subscribe. He puts out really, really good content. He puts out very, very frequent, more frequent than me on Hylion. He's absolutely a believer in the technology and the need to incorporate uh, RNG into our repertoire in the United States from a deeper perspective. He understands how things work. Okay. He used to be a businessman. He understands business. He understands the internal workings and he speaks on that all the time. So his insights uh, along those threads are absolutely uh, worth catching his videos. You need to kick over there and you need to subscribe. Do this as a personal favor to me. If you're like, oh, I don't know, just, just, just shut your trap and go do it for me. Okay. Get this guy up to 10, 20,000 subscribers would just be fantastic. I know there's a few thousand subscribers that catch these highly on videos. They're very, very popular as they should be because most everybody is very, very impassioned about and perhaps has some stake in the company. I will just give a plug for Paul's last video when he talked about uh, shorting the stock right now, uh, Hylion has about a 25% interest. Just to put this into context for you, anything less than 10% is required is is deemed kind of a, a lower uh, uh, short interest in a company. Anything over 20% is extremely high. Anything in between 10 and 20% is high. Okay, so. Hylion is a heavily shorted company. Make no mistake about it. The 25% uh, short interest in the company right now is at a, an extreme level. We're in seventh gear. We're 9,000 RPMs on the tachometer, okay? The neon green tachometer. However you want to think about it, it is absolutely being shorted. And I chalk it up to manipulation because Paul does a very, very good job of talking about the very reason for shorting the stock, 
having nothing to do with the interest of the company. It's all about the bottom line. It's all about exploiting a weakness in a new company that uh, is developing their technology and developing their product, going through product validation only to be subject to the short interest within the company's uh, first years of inception. And Paul talks about the potential of having a one-year moratorium and all new entrants to the market to actually allow them to not be subject to uh, such scrutiny right out of the gate. I think it's super smart. Will it ever happen? Hell no, it'll never happen. Again, the SEC spends most of their time on vacation. Uh, the U.S. stock market is absolutely the Wild West. It's, it's horrible. Uh, it is not governed at all. Uh, people know what they can get away with, and they do it all the time. And that's just the nature of the beast. And that is uh, the way that I see it. So kick over and support Paul, please. I would expect that this message is well received by you guys. We need to st uh, start supporting these channels out there that are providing the ample education on Hylion because Paul talks about the potential for less than 1% of the populace out there to even understand RNG, understand CNG and the opportunities that exist. And if we're not going to put any type of awareness uh, requirement on ourselves, in turn, we can put those requirements on the government that we elected into place, then there is no incentive to change. Okay. And he talks about this on the channel. Second element to business, uh, I would caught a lot of crap, which is pretty typical. Um, I'm used to it. I'm, I'm like a rhino. That would be my power animal uh, between a rhino and a shark. Uh, about my scathing remarks about the hit job video I put out on the fish. Okay. Uh, I will not mention his name on my channel anymore. Uh, negative publicity is good publicity anymore. And I, I will not do this. What I will say uh, is that the fish is a subpar analyst who gets it wrong uh, the majority of the time. Okay. Now it is a slight majority of the time, but he's wrong. Most of the time I can put this in the same category as a weatherman. Um, but uh, usually weathermen can be uh, uh, wrong a lot more than this. When you're dealing with stock, what I question is what the hell you're even looking at if you're wrong most of the time. Okay. The fish put out a downgrade and I quote, because I had some people saying that um, the fish came out and said that they were not going to meet sales projections into 2024. Here's the two reasons why. Reason number one, customers need more time to warm up to a new company. Are you, are you freaking kidding me? Customers need time to warm up to a new company. That's reason number one. This is a stock analyst. It's a stock analyst. Customers need time to warm up to a new company. This is the reason why Hylion will not meet sales projections for, they've already disclosed 2021, that, that's fine. But for 2022, 2023, and 2024, hmm, interesting. I'd like to offer a retort article that came out just yesterday by Larry Raymer. That is a name that I will push through on the Independent Investor Channel. I don't care what you need to do. Send Mr. Larry Raymer, who's an actual uh, uh, author with Investor Place, who just put an article out, Four Reasons Why Bears May Be Underestimating Highly on Stock. If you read that article, it's actually written by somebody that seems like they actually enjoy what it is that they do unlike the fish who offers that customers need time to warm up to a new company. Really, in what industry are you talking about where customers need to warm up to a new company for three years? Really? Okay. I don't get it. If, if I'm going to put on a neon green condom, you want to know what I'm going to do about it? And I don't need three years to make it happen. Fish, I don't need it. Okay. Reason number two, the supply chain, which as of late has become an issue. Okay. And if he had was worth his salt would have estimated this 
six months ago. Okay. Instead of putting what I consider to be, and it was, it was a hit job. It's a, it's a hit job guys. I don't apologize for my voice. If you don't like what I have to say, turn it off, go do something else with your time, go vacuum the carpet, go do something other than sit and watch me. I don't care. But one thing about me is I tell it like it is. And it was a hit job lowering the stock price from 14 to five, because over the next three years, they will not meet sales projections because of why, because they need to have time for customers to warm up to their product. That's implying that said customers are still trying to put on the condom, right? They're, 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 they're struggling to put on the condom. They're struggling. Okay. And, and they intend on, on maybe putting that condom to work down the line within the next three years. Okay. That's what he's implying. Okay. Now, if you're implying that all of the companies out there are, are still struggling to put the condom on, that's implying that customers have not bought the product. Okay. We'll talk about Larry Raymer's article here shortly about what he disclosed uh, on, on this very front, the supply chain and the labor shortage, really the labor shortage. There's about 150 employees at Hylion. Hylion runs a capital lean business structure for you guys that are invested in the companies and your bulls on the company. You'll understand that this is a very, very fundamental reason as to why you invest in Hylion and not Nicola. Okay. Not Nicola. At the very, very best, Hylion, with their uh, capital lean business structure, is aiming toward a 35% margin on its final product, okay? Now, I would love to speculate on how much Nikola is uh, projecting to make in their margins, but that information is not available right now. It's not. What they're getting full credit for is entering into deals to wave a magic wand and make hydrogen fuel station hubs available at some point in the future. Now that's assuming that the money automatically falls from the sky and these said uh, hi uh, hydrogen fuel cell hubs just uh, come out of nowhere and drive the cost of hydrogen down, which is now four times the cost of, of diesel to an economical level to justify these companies buying these trucks that underperform in the long range, under 400 miles, okay? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Capital intensive, capital lean, that's the difference. So can Hylion uh, deal with an order that comes in that's a large order if they have deals with OEMs? Our OEMs just going to allow Peter Bolt built uh, to turn out these on their sole OEM line. If the demand increases and these companies do uh, figure out how to get the neon green condom on and, and want to actually use it right within the next three years. Do you see my point, guys? I don't understand these two uh, at all. Supply chain and labor shortage is what this individual, the fish, is talking about is going to persist for the next three years. Three years. Hit job. If you don't like it, turn the channel off and go elsewhere. I don't want you here. Actually, I don't care. You can come in. You can hate. Leave your comments. Tell me, tell me how bad of a person I am for being the one person that in this life, okay, we all just want to be like, we, we want to pat each other on the ass. And we want to just all feel hunky dory about everything that's going on. And 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 you you stepped over the line, Ryan. You you were you were a little bit tough on that analyst who emerged from the shadows to offer a hit job and lower the stock price target from what was fourteen to five five dollars, which in all actuality and market action is really coming to uh, fruition, is it not? Are you guys watching this? Incredible. Okay. In reaction to the stock uh, being lowered, it drove down that very day, which I still don't understand, but it played right into the shorthands. 
okay? The 25% short interest on the stock that's currently going on, okay? So the fish, pretty, pretty, pretty telling to see where this company goes into the future. I'd love to see the fish really just rot, to be honest with you, and see this company actually proceed up to something more in the lines of 12, 13, 14, $15 toward the year's end. Then it's going to expose it for what it is, a hit job. For you guys that think that I was way too scathing, you need to grow up and put your big boy pants on. This is business, okay? This is business. Um, he has the right to earn a living. Bullshit. Not by selling propaganda. Not, not by offering reasons that, that I just uh, explained to you. I quoted it from the actual downgrade report. Now let's talk about something productive. Larry Raymer. Send him a friend request. He's my new boy, Larry Raymer. He actually speaks in a way, Ryan, you only like information that agrees with you. That's not necessarily true. I just read the stuff that I disagree with, and I think it's ill-founded, and they don't ever focus on anything that is important. I just did a blog article on Highly on, highly on I'll share it in the comment section, so you guys can link over there and you can share it. I talk about stuff that no article, uh, no blogger even talks about. I talk about it. I highly encourage you to take a read on it. It'll take you a few minutes to take a read on it. Get my unique twist on what's going on right now in the industry and with highly on holdings compared to the competition who gets all the nod. Okay. Look at Tesla. It goes up every single day. Okay. Are you telling me that that is a better value right now to enter into high, uh, to Tesla uh, or Nikola, which also goes up every day, as opposed to this company? I don't buy it. Larry Raymer. Four reasons why bears may be underestimating highly on stock by Larry Raymer. He's my boy, Larry. Okay. And it reads different than any other article that I've ever seen on Investor Place. Most of these hack jobs are trying to actually just earn a living by stirring up propaganda and putting it out there to the masses to read over and get emotional about. Larry didn't do that. Wrote a very good article. Here are the four reasons that he offered. Number one, sales. What? Hold on. Let me go back to the fish. The fish says that they need three years to put on the condom. I don't understand this at all. Larry Raymer says that they have sales. A couple things in the article I didn't know about. And for that, I apologize. I didn't know that Hylion uh, has made multiple deals, three of which I didn't even know about. Penske, okay, who is also on the Innovation Council, uh, has bought, tested, and has been validating the hybrid product uh, since early last year. Pinsky, I, I didn't know that. If you guys knew that, you can tell me I'm crazy or whatever, or I should have known that. I didn't know that. Now, remember, all of these sales have accumulated up to this point to be realized on hybrid sales on this next earnings call. Interesting. Interesting. For an environment that Mr. Fish wants to um, uh, paint for you, in the industry is such that Hylion needs to continue to warm up to customers when in fact, Mr. Raymer's actually talking about said sales, they're done, they're done. These are the units that were put into the fleets to put to work. Mind you, these are the units, the old units, okay? So expect that the EX1 is going to garner that much more attention because I can only speculate that some of the road miles that were used in that validation were used in the uh, EX uh, hybrid unit, the EX1, okay? This latest version that came out. Wegmans. Wegmans had a couple that were put into the fleet. And Cat Transport, I had no idea that this was even in place, had five units. In, in place. The irony in the whole thing is that each one of them talked about the specific additional horsepower, the savings on the diesel side of it, and the lowering of the carbon footprint by using each of these products, right? See the disconnect between those two? 
when you stack on all of the highly on sales that has gone on, I've lost track. I know Detmar had a bunch in there. I know Idealese had a bunch in there. I know that uh, actually CR England had a bunch early on. There was a bunch of companies that helped this company get to where they are now in, 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 in this validation phase. So I, I find it hard to understand based on the public information that was put out there. And it was disclosed as well that Fish was on his own on this. Okay. He wasn't provided anything from Hylion. That's been verified through investor relations. He was provided nothing. He did this on his own accord. Okay. Hit job. That's what it was. Okay. He had no information to go off of except for the publicly uh, discernible information that's available to all shareholders. Never talked about it. Never talked about that. Okay. Never talked about these companies who represent hundreds and thousands of trucks of potential customers and orders uh, to satisfy the customer demand on these companies becoming more green. We'll talk about that next. All right. So sales have already been done. Validation has already been done, which only helps Hylion accelerate their first mover advantage, which I say that tongue in cheek because Hylion doesn't need a first mover advantage. These other offshoots are going in completely different directions than Hylion. Nobody is doing what they're doing. Nobody. Nobody can boast the results that they can boast. And I don't think there's any company out there that is closer to integrating with big industry than Hylion. And they're doing it now. Okay. Sales, number one. Number two, the customer demand to go green. If you don't think that this is a big deal, you're crazy. Okay. Now the fish says that the customers, the customers of Anheuser-Busch, the customers of Agility, the customers of Pinsky and down the line, right. Who have pressure from state legislations to clean up their act. If they're going to transport through uh, specific states. Okay. There is pressure there. The pressure has built and it's built over many, many, many years. And just as of late, that pressure is almost, it's almost tangible. You can almost touch it a little bit, okay? Customers are demanding that those companies can go green. Well, industry has been put in a position of convenience for many, many years in that they've said, look, you've got a Bev truck that can go 200 miles, and I've got to have my driver sit there for 45 minutes while they charge it. Okay, no, thank you. And they've been provided that out. Industry ha has taken that out. And the technology of the solutions companies have uh, anted up that out. It's industry. That's what they're going to do. If you cannot provide TCO benefit, carbon footprint benefit and efficiency benefit, you do not belong in the same building to sit down at the table with big industry and confidently talk about how you meet all three. And there's deeper, that's just the tip of the iceberg. TCO, very, very granular when you get into the bottom line detail about X number of gallons per fuel compared to X number of miles saved over the long term of uh, comparative RNG miles driven. It gets very, very uh, in depth, as well as the green initiative. What does it mean to be net carbon uh, negative? What does that mean? What could that mean for the company profile? What could it mean in this exclusive division? What could it mean overall when they take that net uh, carbon negative that they've got in their trucking footprint to perhaps maybe even lower the total uh, environmental uh, stewardship score of the company as a whole? These are huge. Customers are demanding this. Investors are demanding this. Investors are starting to look more and more uh, at a company's environmental stewardship, and they're using it as a thesis to buy think it's crazy? We're in a time right now where people are buying digital assets that don't exist in nature because it feels good to do so. You think that's crazy for people to be investing in companies that take the green initiative or at least a positive step in the green direction? Okay. I'm not a tree hugger, 
But the first thing that I can say is maybe is, is there potential to do more for the planet and where that do more is available to industry? Let's, let's go. Let's get that swift kick in the ass that I talk about all the time. Okay. So customers are demanding this of the, the, um, the actual, and I, I use the innovation council as kind of the representative sample of business uh, providing product and said customers on the other side demanding this little bit different than what the fish talked about. The fish talked about customers are all right. They're blase about this thing. Shit, continue to pollute the atmosphere. It's all good. We're good, baby. Pump it in there. I don't care. As long as you get me my product, I don't care. Ruin the planet. Ruin it. Ruin it. Okay. Remember, I come back to the short sellers on this deal. The short sellers only have one initiative in this deal. One, and that is money. Okay. Long shareholders in the company also have an agenda to make money, but for them to make money, they know that the company has to succeed. And that is the very element that short sellers are short-sighted on. They don't need the company su to succeed. Short sellers are rooting for the company to fail. They're rooting for the companies to fail. That's why I determine a hit job from the fish to be just that, a hit job when it comes out because there is a side agenda to it. You cannot make stuff up like this and expect for an educated investor for me to read a comment like that. Customers need time to warm up to a new company. It's bullshit, Fish. It's bullshit. And over time, it will be proven that you're going to need to crawl back under that rock that you came from, you subpar analyst, to put out a hit job on this from a company that is doing all things right, all things right, okay? We live in an environment, in a utopian society, to where if we could just provide a little bit of protection for these companies that are innovating, trying to make those uh, innovative steps, and the belief carries them so far only to be put to public markets and then be subject to immediate short-selling action to drive the stock and sentiment down, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's the environment we live in. Number three, legislation. All right. Mr. Raymer talks about Larry Raymer's my, my new bud. I'm going to send him a friend request after I shoot this video. Larry Raymer. He's my guy. Okay. You need to increase his rankings on Google search. Okay. Larry Raymer is a gangster. He's, he's in with the highly on club. Okay. Uh, legislation. And the incentives that exist therein, we're probably two and a half weeks away from uh, a finalized infrastructure bill. Nobody knows what's in it. Mr. Raymer talks about this. But if you think for a second that it's going to be void of uh, zero to net negative incentives, Mr. Raymer does speculate that the hyper truck ERX will be included in that. That is more factually based than customers needing three years to put on a condom, okay? It is, and here's why. The uh, transportation secretary visited Ann Arbor and the energy secretary, I believe they both visited at the same time the facility actually got to ride in the hyper truck ERX. Whether or not that excitement went back to DC to be written into the legislation that is pending right now only the inner circles in D.C. understand about where we are with that legislation. But the legislation is coming, okay? Now, if customers need time to warm up to said product, don't you think that that incentive in that legislation could drive the conversation forward? It could definitely drive the conversation forward for these companies that are standing by, perhaps maybe not placing orders right now, for the sheer sake of waiting for the legislation to come out to make sure that they don't buy a product now that they're going to be provided incentive for later. Oh, fish, you dropped the ball on this, man. You really did. You sure did. Okay. I bid you all the best luck in, in making a living. I really do. But this was a hit job. This was a hit job. And I do not apologize for calling it just that. 
legislation and potential incentives that can provide that additional oomph to those people who need to warm up to the idea of doing something positive for the planet. They need to warm up to the idea of uh, t t total cost of ownership being actually better for them on the bottom line. They need to warm up uh, to these hybrid units that are $25,000 on the onset, but then will pay for themselves over time and actually increase the value of the underlying asset, right? They need, they need to warm up. Okay, fish. The last thing I will mention is the product itself. I talked about the uh, capital lean structure that Hylion has when they turn these products out. There's been an increased number of validation cases that have come back, and Larry Raymer did not talk about this uh, in the article outside of one, which I was really surprised that he mentioned, and that was Wegmans. Of all, of all, of all things. Interesting enough, um, Wegmans is on the um, Innovation Council. I see Wegmans trucks all the time. Uh, they drive for Publix, I believe. Okay, and that's the key. Is when you look at these companies like Warner, uh, like Schneider. Look who they drive for: Ruan, Dollar General. <laughs> right? You've heard of these companies? Not small potatoes. Okay, they all represent big, big companies out there who are looking at reducing the carbon footprint and going greener, okay? So when I talk about customers, I'm not talking about the, the little old lady who's walking up and down the shelves at, at uh, supermarket uh, grabbing one bottle of Coke off of the, the, um, the, the shelf. No, these customers also have customers, okay? Now, remember when these companies go green, they get to fly the flag of going green. You don't think that that's good PR? You don't think that they want to do this now? You honestly think that it's going to take them time to warm up to the fact that we need to do something about the planet now when the very customers that are demanding said initiative are demanding that now? It just doesn't add up. And I'm sorry if my unique perspective is scathing. I'm sorry if I don't agree with groupthink, okay? I am an independent uh, thinker. And I would suggest for those of you guys that need to be influenced by everybody out there on the horizon, okay? Initiate the brain into self-thinking mode, okay? Initiate brain, make decisions on your own and understand why you're making those decisions, especially in the investing arena, okay? Do not pop into a YouTube thread and start getting your validation from the YouTube thread. There's only one or two people in that YouTube thread that I even respect anymore, okay? There's people in there that are like, I just sold all my stock. Well, they don't just ride off onto the horizon because they're happy that they've done so. No, they show up the next day in the Yahoo thread and they're all of a sudden the biggest, biggest critic on the stock. Why? because they're trying to substantiate the decision that they've made for themselves based on what everybody out there told them that they needed to do. Nothing's changed with the company. One day is not going to substantiate your position in the company. The, the company's position will either be unsubstantiated or substantiated over the coming years. Not right now, not next week, and not next month. Okay, You might get little injects. You might have a 50 cent uh, increase in the stock price. You might have a moron analyst who wants to crawl out behind the rock that they're in and, and, and say, hey, look at me. I've got all the answers and offer some hit job on a company that's vulnerable in the marketplace. That's exactly what the fish did. Okay. That's exactly what they did. Okay. The product. Super, super important for you guys to understand the product itself, and the validation that's occurred. The Northwest validation is the one that sticks with me the most. Those three companies that were part of the state-driven initiative for uh, the green uh, initiative. I forget what the program is called, but there were three companies. Tillamook Creamery was one of them. They all loved the product. They all loved it. And when I talked to investor relations on this, I spoke with Lewis uh, on this and basically look at it this way. If companies were part of the validation phase, they've 
established some rapport. They've already warmed up to the company, Fish. They've already warmed up, right? And if the product, the EX1, was not available on the onset, wouldn't they? Wouldn't it have been in their best interest to wait until perhaps they, maybe that state legislation rolls out, the federal legislation rolls out, and then you've got Hylion right there ready to deliver said product to the marketplace, okay? Things I wanted to talk about, make sure that you kick over to Paul Cardo's channel. Very good. I've invited him on the live stream. I'd love to have him on. It just a, He's a real brilliant guy. Um, he, he's kind of like me in that I watch him through YouTube and I'm like, you're not a YouTuber. Okay, you're not. But the guy deserves 50, 80, 100,000 subscribers. And he said, you know, if I had the voice on the channel, I'd be calling out this BS as well. With my small voice in the community, that's exactly what I look to do. 30,000 subscribers. If I had 300,000, I'd be doing the exact same thing. And I'd have people unsubscribing from me. Oh my God, this guy's crazy. He's telling me to leave his channel. Yeah, get the hell lost. I don't care. See, that's the difference between me is I don't mind coming on and using YouTube for my voice, okay? Because the power of the voice to get people to understand that we power in numbers have way more capability if we have the ability to engage self-thought and think for ourselves and understand that either this company is going to be in one of two scenarios next year two years down the line, or three years down the line. Scenario one, they're still fumbling to put on the condom, fish. Do you honestly think that next year the stock price is going to be at $7 a share? The bears are going to be like, it's going to be at two, Ryan. It's going to be at two. I guarantee it's going to be at two. I just sold my shares yesterday. So therefore, the company is going to go out of business. Really? If you've done due diligence on this company, you'll understand that this company is a hell of a lot deeper than just its involvement in public markets. <laughs> Mark my word, they have pedigree at Hylion Holdings. There's no doubt about it. I asked Lewis when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, what's it like? What's it like to work at Hylion? So it's incredible. People are awesome. They feel like they're part of something incredible. They feel like they've bought into a vision for the future and that Hylion is the only one that can actually bring the technology forward to make that net uh, negative uh, carbon emissions future uh, possible. They're excited. People are vigorous. They have vigor. Um, they understand that they can buy into a cause and enjoy coming to work. This is what the man said. I've never been there. He works there, right? And I asked him, you know, what's the demeanor? Do people just walk around like Neanderthals with their knuckles uh, dragging on the ground because the stock price is trading at seven? It has nothing to do with anything that people who come to work at highly on holdings uh, uh, have to do. It has nothing to do with that. Because at the company, there's a march toward a vision, okay? And they're doing that in cooperation with the very industry that they, look at, they are looking to partner with, have already gained validation from, and are looking to uh, ramp up production with to make sure that exponentially these fleets out there are giving the, given the best chance to give their customers what they want, and that is a greener uh, future within their fleets. And more importantly, a greener future for the planet, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you tuning into the message. Make sure and subscribe to the channel. Share the message with anybody out there. Highly in airs be the last plug I make for Paul. Please kick over, subscribe to his channel. I'd love to see his subscriber count go up to like 10,000. I think that'd be phenomenal. Um, but I piss a lot of people off on the channel. So a lot of my original subscribers, um, they're not with me. I haven't changed. I'm still the same uh, crazy bastard that comes on and shares YouTube. Okay. I'm still the same, same fella. People who tune into me, they know that I do what it is that I talk about. Okay. I don't have a side agenda. You think my side agenda is ad revenue? <laughs> it's, it's laughable. Okay, you'll understand if you start a YouTube channel, um, but they understand that I speak from the heart and I speak uh, in a manner that uh, is scathing at times. It is. And I'm sorry if that offends you. But when I say it, like I see it, I, I'm not I'm giving you the goods. I really am. It's meant to provoke 
provoke thought and maybe provoke thought in some of those people out there that need a little bit of an adjustment, a little bit of motivation, a little bit of an understanding to understand that investing in and of itself is a luxury. It is not a right. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and good luck in your investment future. 